You've got all these guys, guys and girls, posting on social media, whatever motivational speech that Joe Rogan or David Goggins or Andy Stump or Jocko Willink, they're going to share that. They're going to put it to their pictures, doing the lifts that they're already good at with their veins popping out, but they will quit jujitsu because it's too hard because I'm not good at it right now. Everyone loves doing things they're good at. Mm -hmm. Sure. Everybody. That's why people have hobbies. Jiu-jitsu is the hobby for people that are okay with sucking. What's up, guys? We're back. Uh, it's the Best of Midland, Texas podcast. I'm Ryan Shuchuk. This is my wife, the gorgeous Tara Avery. Oh. We interview small business owners, entrepreneurs, and personalities, and uh, people who can choke you out sometimes. Today's guest is Brad Barnes. He is the owner and the head instructor of Midland BJJ and MMA, which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Mixed Martial Arts. He's won numerous medals and awards, and he has an amazing facility here in Midland. Brad's a former law enforcement officer with both the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office and the Midland Police Department, now trains other law enforcement officers in police jiu-jitsu, as well as teaching civilians in self-defense. So, defend yourself. Brad, that was a mouthful. Thanks for being on our show today. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming down. On. We'll just get right into the questions. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. You've got people to beat up probably. And um, <laughs> So for people like myself mm -hmm. who don't necessarily uh, know what the difference is, can you kind of explain Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, MMA, and regular Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah. So really... Jiu-Jitsu started out in Japan anyway. There's actually become this kind of new revolution and, and way of thinking in this that really the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu part of it was heavily influenced by like a marketing tactic, you know, by the Gracie family. Sure, okay. Jiu-Jitsu just really focuses that the, the differences that the Brazilians were able to imply was we're going to be able to do this when we hit the ground for a sustained period of time because in Judo, the rules for Nawaza, once you hit the ground, it's, it's very, uh, very quick that you have to start going into action. There's not any stalling and setups. The okay. setup happened while you were falling and getting hit by a planet, you know? <laughs> right. So you have to be really on the timing. So jiu-jitsu allowed for people to be able to, man, if I don't get the takedown, I can influence how the fight takes place, the pace, you know, what kind of damage. I can, I can mitigate punches and kicks and learn how to control people better over time on the ground. And with MMA, you know, MMA was, when I first started doing it in August of 2000, it was my first fight. <laughs> um, should not have done that. But um, <laughs> looking at that, Back then, MMA wasn't called MMA. The UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, didn't call it MMA. It was there was guys that did shoot fighting, and mm -hmm. pit fighting, and all these different you know thirty seven name long traditional Chinese martial arts and, and kung fu and stuff. They were doing all these things just as a way to try to see who was full of crap and who right. wasn't. And it all went to the Gracie family. You yeah, know, they dominated. Yeah, wrestlers and jiu-jitsu guys were able to win very early on because nobody knew how to defend a takedown. And you can't throw punches when you're on your back. It's, I mean, you can. It's just not – it's not it's a waste effective. of time. It's a yeah. waste of, of energy. You're going to hurt your fingers. It's, there's all kinds of things that come from that. So that's what really turned modern-day MMA from that that early day. And, and jiu-jitsu has evolved from being just like Brazilian jiu-jitsu to yeah. now you've got – you know, the, the best instructor in the world, John Donaher, is using for every Brazilian jiu-jitsu technique, he's using the traditional Japanese name. So it's really made it where people go like, oh, well, maybe fighting is just fighting. Yeah. Got it. Okay. You know? And and all the all the names and all the side things are just like somebody's take on this is this is what I like from fighting. This is what's good for me. This is what I'm gonna focus on. Yeah. But really, I mean jiu jitsu, Brazilian jiu jitsu, Japanese jiu jitsu, it's all the same thing. Gotcha. I think I watched the first UFC on pay per view. wasn't it, uh, Wasn't Royce Gracie in the first one? He was in the first. Well, the, his brother uh -huh. was the one that was a, a partner in creating it with Bob Marowitz. Okay, and so they were like, "Hey, let's do this." The whole time they were like, "This is going to be an infomercial. This is so <laughs> awesome." Like today, like it's all sanctioned and stuff like that. They didn't have weight classes. They were just like, "This guy, this guy, this guy is three times the size." It's literally like watching uh, the video game Street Fighter, but just real people. <laughs> really, I mean, it was blood sport. Yes. One of my movie, Bloodsport. Every MMA guy loves Bloodsport yes. and The Quest <laughs> because those two movies, you're like, oh, that's how it is. Right. What about the show Kingdom? Kingdom is very realistic. Really? Insanely realistic. And I know I, I have friends it. with several guys that were uh, stunt guys. And like Joe Daddy, he was actually able to get speaking part and do a lot of stuff. If, if anybody wants to know what it's like to date or be married to or be friends with <laughs> a professional MMA fighter. Kingdom's a great That's show for yeah, okay. education. I love that show. It's a great show. Everybody that wants to get hit in the face for fun 
And then on top of that, you know what? I think this is a great way to make a living. Those people are all crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So Brad, you're a second degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And you said you did had a first MMA fight at 2000. So how long you've been training and how'd you get into it? I've been training for 23 years, but I've really been training since 2005. Okay. 2000, 2004, 2005. Wait a minute. Go ahead. So you did your first fight in 2000. Uh huh. And you hadn't trained. Correct. You just, you are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's definitely there, there, a lot of the why did you get involved in jujitsu is definitely taught to on the couch with my counselor and my therapist and stuff. Um, because there's all kinds of stuff to unpack yeah. there. But back then, training wasn't really training. Training is what we would go, this makes sense to us. Let's walk in the room. We'll stretch for a couple seconds, do some jumping jacks, shadow box poorly. Didn't know what we were doing. Okay. <laughs> and then let's just start punching each other in the face. Oh, well, you know, I saw this one move on pride fighting last January. Let's go back and try it. I saw this move on the UFC that came out last, last month. Cause remember they only come out every three months back then the highest level people that you could find in this area mm -hmm. was my group of guys that we all trained together. And then they became blue belts in jiu-jitsu. That's the first belt. Like, So you're a white belt when you start. Okay. You get your first promotion, you're a blue belt. Those guys are blue belts. They are the authority in West Texas now. Wow. You could drive to Lubbock and go train uh, with a black belt there. Or you could drive to Dallas and Houston and Austin. Wow. That, that was it. Mm. So it was really just a whole lot of process of elimination and trying to figure out how to actually train. And then – Fast forward to now, and training is just so much better. Everything's set up where you don't have people getting injured all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't have people taking damage. Mm -hmm. You know, you understand like, hey, the, this part of the sport is necessary, but we've got to figure out a way to make it less intense, change the way that we're doing things, change the approach, make yeah. things more cerebral. So, so training compared to what training is now is just night and day. Wow. Let's talk about your actual facility here. So when did you open the uh, Midland B BJJ? So it, it's gone through a lot of iterations from having different business partners and instructors with me and marketing and everything else. Um, but me establishing a business, trying to run all the day to day and everything like that has been since 2010 here. Okay. Um, in 2006, I, I was moved back here to be a police officer. And then I opened up with a, a group of three other guys. They ran all the stuff and I would teach the MMA portion because I was the only one that had been fighting MMA. I was involved in that. I would just, you know, on the paperwork as one of the owners or whatever, but I didn't put any money into it. I didn't mm -hmm. have any skin in the game. Sure. So then in 2010, I put all the skin in the game. Who can benefit most from Brazilian jiu-jitsu and what are some of the benefits? Everybody. There's there's a couple of different schools of thought in jiu-jitsu. Some instructors say jiu-jitsu is for everyone. There's some people who go, hey, jiu-jitsu is for everyone, but not at the same time in their life. And okay. Some people are like, hey, gotcha. jiu-jitsu is not for everybody because it's so hard. All of those answers are correct. Anyone can do this that wants to do it, period. But only a select few can do it when they run into adversity. And that is the biggest struggle with jiu-jitsu. And yeah, that's the biggest yeah. struggle with self-defense training anyway. It's, it's difficult and you can never master it. There's got to be a high turnover rate, right? Because you, you get into it and you're like, okay, even if you're just like, I like to watch UFC. Yeah. You might want to get into it. Or I want to learn you know, how, how to defend myself. Or... I want to get into shape, yeah. right? But once you start getting hit or, you know, getting bruises on your face and stuff, there's, a lot of people might go, all right, this might not. <laughs> when people would ask, like, is MMA training to be competitive in mixed martial arts? Is that for everyone? Absolutely not. Mm, sure. Training MMA to get in, uh, better prepared for self-defense absolutely is because the way you would train would be different. You know, I'm, I'm training for consistency over time to yield results. That's one of my favorite quotes from Chad Lyman. You know, that's the best math formula ever. And that is very apparent with anyone that does jiu-jitsu. As long as you don't quit, you're going to be a black belt. That's pretty cool. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can't say, hey, as long as you don't quit school, you're going to graduate with, you know, your degree, como som laude with, you know, PhD and everything else. <laughs> I, no one can guarantee that. I can guarantee you if you don't quit, you'll be a black belt. The people that get promoted in jiu-jitsu, they get a strip of athletic tape, not even a whole strip. That's like maybe worth some money. They get like a quarter of a strip and it goes around the end of your belt and that thing is going to rip off, tear off, roll up, turn black. And they, they will cry over it because the work that they put it, in it, the work, the physical effort that it requires to put on your shoes, get off the couch, stop making excuses and do something that, you know, for a fact, when you get in there, you will not be good at. Everyone loves doing things they're good at. Mm -hmm. Sure. Everybody. That's why people have hobbies. Jiu-jitsu is the hobby for people that are okay with sucking. You know those people that we all hate, that they walk in, they're in great shape, they got the abs or whatever, they got hair. 
just basically the opposite of me. <laughs> they walk in the room. They've never skateboarded before. They see a skateboard sitting in the corner. They pick it up. They go outside. Ten minutes later, they're kick flipping. Yeah. yeah. Those people will come and do jujitsu and be like, this is too hard. It's too complicated. Yeah. It's too complicated. Why? Because I can't athlete out of it is what they want to say, it. but they can't say that because they don't want to admit that maybe being a superior athlete isn't always going to be the answer to every problem in my life. So you have to learn how to problem solve. And that's what jujitsu does. It makes people be better physically, makes them be better mentally, and makes them be better, like I would say, on a emotional level. You know, there's sense. there's something to be said for someone being able to maintain their composure because they understand I can do something to this person that's yelling at me, screaming at me, that's mad because they got their order wrong. I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, that I didn't cut them off. Somebody stopped in front of me and I swerved out of the way. Like, yeah. people get mad about everything. If you know what other people are capable of, you won't let that get you bent out of shape when it's coming at you. And you won't throw it at other people because you know, hey, I could beat this well, but I get beat up every day too. Yeah, It kind of lets you know where you're at on that food chain. You've got all these guys, guys and girls, posting on social media, whatever motivational speech that Joe Rogan or David Goggins or Andy Stump or Jocko Willink, whatever motivational thing that they put up, they're going to share that. And they're going to put it to their pictures, doing the lifts that they're already good at with their veins popping out, <laughs> but they will quit jujitsu because it's too hard because I'm not good at it right now. Don't do the thing that's hard, but you're good with it because you, man, I feel cool when I do this. Right. I look cool and I'm posting about it. Do the thing that, yeah. Do that thing that you're like, oh. This is going to be rough. Yeah. This sucks. That's what they're telling us to do. So I know that you have a workshop coming out for women's self-defense, mm -hmm. uh, partnering with Hit for Fit. Yes. Is that correct? So for me, who does not like violence, going to that, like what can I expect or other scared women like myself? The focus is not, number one, to be violent. Mm -hmm. The focus is to get you in the mindset that you understand that you are actually worth defending. That is a huge problem for people. Mm -hmm. Most people, when they look at the uh, an advertisement for an MMA gym, they see like the, the head kick picture, come and train, be a champion, whatever. They see the arm bar picture. Yeah. They don't view themselves as the person doing it. They view themselves as the person that being done to. People hate themselves. People don't want to speak up for themselves. People don't advocate for themselves from the time they're a kid until the time they're done. Yeah. The people that are not willing to do that, you're trying to get through their head that, hey, I understand you don't like violence. Violence is horrible. Violence is very ugly. I see, I've seen violence so much in my life that I definitely have problems about it. Yeah. It makes me sick to my stomach, but not when it's directed, when it's got a purpose, mm -hmm. when it's doing something righteous, protecting the most important person, which is yourself. Right. And then protecting your kids. I have all these women that have come into the gym, say, I want my kid to learn how to defend themselves. I want my daughter to learn how to defend themselves. You should do it too. Yeah. If we're in the mall parking lot and someone decides to fall to your car and you're with your kid, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. we're going to rely on hope as being a tactic. Hope is not a tactic. No. You know, people will watch that happen. People will videotape that happen. You might get one guy that's got the balls to go forward and do something about it. Yeah. You know, this is Midland, Texas. Everybody here said, well, if this happened, I'd shoot. Would you really? If this happened, I'd, yeah. would you really? Because that's not the case. The numbers prove otherwise. Yeah. Because in that moment, you're, holy crap, what can I do? And you can only do what you've trained yourself to do. Yeah. When everything fails, when the gun fails, when you haven't practiced pulling that concealed handgun out of your purse or out of your waistband, when you haven't practiced pulling that cool knife out that you bought because, oh man, that's that knife that the sock pee guy uses, man, that's awesome. <laughs> if you don't know how to fight, if you don't train to build skills and to build familiarity with going through stress, then when the stress happens, you will freeze. Maybe you'll fight, but when you fight, you're only going to fight for so long. Yeah. We see people get exhausted in 30 seconds. Sure. If you, if you can put one minute of really good pressure on somebody, they will fold. They'll understand what's going on. They'll understand where on the food chain they're at. Yeah. Mm. How often do y'all do these classes for the women? And that's the biggest thing. I will put on a workshop. Absolutely put on a workshop. I'll do one for free or I'll do one where I donate, like we're donating to Safe Place. Mm -hmm. I'll put those on once a month if I need to, every other month, whatever. But if you don't do the work, you will not get the result. Consistency yeah. it's not over a one time, time equals results. Yeah. If you go in there and you do two hours, you're going to learn some, you are going to learn some skills and you're going to learn situational awareness. But if you're not getting those reps, then you don't understand what it feels like to do any of it. You're, you're definitely not, you're going to get a, just a little taste in two hours. Yeah. But the real work comes with going in every day and then going at a pace where you don't get yourself hurt, that you're able to do a workout 
that you're understanding the what ifs because everybody when you show something oh man that works but what if and the what if is important how do you find out the what if do you take my word for it well if i just tell you yeah this will happen well then right. you didn't train that skill you didn't build that that muscle memory i feel very conflicted anytime i put on like a workshop because mm-hmm. then it's always like oh i want to do the workshop the work is happening every day right mm-hmm. it's what happens after the workshop it's not putting your keys between your fingers you're not I was not teaching you that stuff. My job is to teach people stuff that works, not stuff that is theoretical. I feel like a lot of people are like, well, I've got a gun and I watched the UFC. So yeah, I'm John Wick now. (laughs) You know what I mean? Versus like what happens when it really hits the fan. So what happens with that is, is if you have a gun on and you and I are touching, we are in a weapon based entanglement. Okay. That's a really simple way to think of it. And depending on the level of retention on your holster, depending on your proficiency, how you're standing, what I'm doing, where my hands are, if you're controlling hands, if you're fighting angles, that is not your gun, that is our gun. And if it's ours and I train, it's it's mine. And that's real life. And there's so many guys out here walking around carrying open carrying guns. And I guarantee they're great shots. Pull it out. Yeah. Put, what, what's the situation we're doing? Are we fighting somebody that's 20 yards away or are we at the bar? Spilled a drink on a guy. He got pissed off. He just got fired that day. He's upset. I walk out. Guy comes out the back door because he just got kicked out of the bar. And now we're right next to each other. He says something and we're three feet from each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to shoot. Are you going to shoot him? Are you going to be legally okay to shoot somebody yes, that yeah. just yeah. decides to talk, start talking bad to you or put their hand on you? Because so now you're talking about what you're even justified to do. Can you just pull your gun out? I don't know. Let's have that argument with a lawyer and 12 people, (laughs) you know? And then, and then the after effects of you might take somebody's life and you know, there might, there's going to be some mental and stressful things that go along with that. I'm sure. Our big thing is if, if you want to know self-defense, you have to learn all of it. So when cops say, I I, I just don't need no weapon retention, how to strike, get a guy off. I don't need to know the ground stuff. You have to know all of it. Fighting is fighting. Yeah. All of this stuff is linked. You're in a fight. Yeah. You don't get to choose where it happens all the time. And how it happens. Yeah. yeah. If you could, then there wouldn't be officers getting killed. That's sure. That's the end of the argument. Just FYI, that place is awesome. It the is. Quail, no, it's right, yeah. The quail there is amazing. Really? I go there get all the time. Oh, it's so good. I haven't eaten there. The bar, sponsor and, me. Yeah. Quail Y'all plates should. for life. As a former law enforcement officer yourself, you now train officers. Can you explain what the C4C, and what police jujitsu is and how it differs? Jujitsu is jujitsu. It's just, we need to kind of trim the fat out. Okay. Officers don't have the ability to say, Hey, I don't want to get taken down in this. They need to be thinking, I don't want to get taken down, but in a sport jujitsu mindset, I don't want to get taken down. So I'm going to sit down, pull guard, pull guard. Yeah. Guard pullers. Guard pullers don't go to heaven is is what I hear from Alan Shabaro. So um, (laughs) it's one of those things where we just trim the fat away. We make it as efficient as possible. We make it where, number one, you worry that, again, we're in weapon-based entanglements. So we're worried about always trying to, where are the hands? Where are this guy's hands? Hands are where danger comes from. So if I'm trying to control hands, I'm trying to control both, or I'm trying to have two controlling one and be able to see the other one, I don't want to ever not be able to find somebody's hands. That's where danger is all the time. So we worry more about hand fighting, fighting the upper body, fighting the head, fighting the angles. Essentially, police jiu-jitsu is – it's MMA. Okay. It's MMA. You don't want to be the guy on bottom getting hit. Yeah. And most jiu-jitsu programs that are done for police are done with ju- just jiu-jitsu in mind where it's like, hey, listen, we can always go to our back. Yes, you can always just go to your back. I don't want to push that as a standardized part of the curriculum to always go to my back. Mm-hmm. That that should not be my that's not my my fallback all the time. My fallback should be like I should be getting up yesterday. I should not be here. I got to get up. I got to fight the hands. Got to get them in front of me. I got to fight to an angle. I got to control this guy's head. I got to control this guy's hips. And I got to find a way to get on top. Now I got to work into handcuffing. And then again, how do we handcuff? Do we just pull the guy's arms because we do CrossFit when we're not on duty? And eat a bunch and play Call of Duty. And we're like, I'm just going to pull this guy's arm so I can get him out because I'm the boss. I'm in charge. No, you have to actually learn how to manipulate the human body. What is jujitsu? You learn how to manipulate the human body. You're trying to put people in physical positions that they don't want to be in yeah. by using the minimum amount of force to make it work. Because if I go all out and mess up, I'm now on bottom doing something bad. So it just fits police work so perfect. It's such a perfect union of what use of force should be. But instead, I'm just going to pull the arm and it not work. So maybe I should just start hitting this guy in the head with my flashlight. Mm-hmm. You know, like that, that's really how it kind of evolves because really like excessive force is ineffective control. And we are teaching the most effective way to control somebody. You were fighting uh, and training prior to becoming a police officer. Yes. Did that sort of get you into law enforcement? Yeah, was it? I was already fighting. 
And then I was bouncing at clubs. Okay. You know, I was bouncing at Graham's and bouncing at Club Arriva. I was, I was bouncing everywhere. And then I started meeting some of the police officers and some of them went, hey, you're the guy that does the thing in the cage, right? The, <laughs> you know, the, the no holds, the NHB fighting is what yeah. we called it back then. I, I really wish it would have been something cool, like more Roadhouse. Like, oh, I thought you'd be taller or something like that. But <laughs> they, were pro- they were probably like, I thought you'd be thinner, but um, <laughs> I thought you'd be in better shape. Um, I started going and training their squad training nights. Okay. I, they, they say, hey, can you come and help us and show us this thing that y'all are doing and how it works and, and what you're looking for? Because they just wanted to see because the fact that there's people out there that are regular people that started doing it without there being established schools or anything like that. Well, that, what does that mean to them? This is something that's now going to maybe become a trend. We mm-hmm. need to be aware. There's people out now that go, hey, I'm not going to stand up and box with the boxer. I'm going to take the guy down. Right. And so I started helping out with squad training. It was really fun. I was like, you guys get to do this? <laughs> <laughs> which was that's what got me in and that's really the only thing that made me that helped me stay at all after i saw some pretty crappy things sure, you know being sure. honest about it i just really really enjoyed training i enjoy teaching people how to use this stuff so that no one can do anything to them you know it's a it's a really big deal for me definitely have some stuff that makes it where it's really personal mm-hmm. but no grown person no any no human being at all should have to let somebody do something to them because they're just physically incapable of defending themselves. And if you're somebody who now is on the other side of that, where it's your job to protect everybody else, like they need to protect themselves. Right. It's your job to protect yourself. And if you can't do that, it's their job to protect you. So I want these guys to be safe. I wanted all the guys on my squad to be safe. There was guys I was like, I don't want that guy on a call because I'm going to have to defend him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to have to save his life because he doesn't know how to fight or he's just going to piss this guy off. And I don't. I didn't even want to fight everybody. Yeah. I was good at it. You know, teaching these guys – how to be safer so that they can get home and so they can help somebody else. That's the priority. Mm -hmm. That's all I cared about. I I don't like the job. Yeah. There's nothing about that. That's a rough job, man. Yeah. There's nothing about that job. that's cool, but I, I can at least help them out. And then that's what got me involved with Chad Lyman and C4C. And then that's what's carried over now where I've got people that are Midland police, Odessa police, DPS, Upton County sheriffs, Reeves County sheriffs, Um, I've got guys that are in the academy at Odessa College that they don't even qualify for free training with us for that. But I'm going to give it to them because I know what I know what the state requires. The state minimum for learning to be a professional fighter is what you are as a police officer. You're you're a counselor. You're a babysitter. You're a traffic cut. You're all these things. But you're also a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. So to have those guys make it where it's 40 hour minimum. That's the minimum requirement, 40 hours. And in those 40 hours, we're going to teach you pressure points, and we're going to teach you to just elbow people in the face, and we're going to teach you some jiu-jitsu. We're going to teach you some wrestling. Weapon retention stuff's involved with that. The baton stuff's involved with that. The OC, all that stuff's involved in that 40 hours. So it's not just focused. So where's the consistency in that training? Yeah. And then what are we worried about? Police officers are using too much force. Police officers are, get, are getting into situations, and they're making bad decisions under stress in fights. What is jujitsu? Problem solving, making decisions while you're under stress in a fight. And we're training people to do that every day. And I got 16-year-olds that can make better decisions fighting grown men than the police officers that come in there the first day. And that's not their fault because that's just, you know, that's the way we grow up. Like, hey, I can can fight because I'm a man. Yeah. I've watched Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah, so many times. <laughs> and Bloodsport. Yeah, that's what I was going to. I was going to ask you. Like, I, I'm surprised. You said 40 hours of training. I'm surprised this is not like a mandatory thing across the nation. I guess. So one of the most fun and rewarding things that I do, I do a lot of fundraising stuff. I do a lot of stuff where I just donate time because, I mean, being honest, like I've been a real big piece of crap for a large portion of my life. (laughs) And if I can do something positive, I need to. One of the things I I help out with is Invictus. That's. Boom. I've become really good friends with uh, Jason Reps. He's the co-founder of Invictus. Ari Nazan, um, he's in Canada. Um, he's the other co-founder. And they were putting on events. And I was just like, man, I, I'd really like to be a part of this stuff. You know, can, can we put bring one out to Midland? So we raised money for the canine unit. Brought another one out. We raised money for the officer that was shot out in Lubbock uh, several years ago. Jason come out. Jeff from Mullinax to come out. Travis Joyner from Sheepdog comes out here on now a regular basis. Being involved with these guys, their push is let's get officers excited about jujitsu. Yeah. For what it can do for them mentally, what it can do for them physically, what it can do for them emotionally. Because, you know, you have all that pent up stress at the end of a shift yeah. that you haven't been able to burn that. And that's what causes PTSD is you see shocking things that your brain, your mind should not be able to see. Jiu-jitsu helps you process because you are now putting yourself in a state of stress. And so your body goes, oh, I was just in a state of stress. I mean, again, let's go ahead and get this other stuff out. Let's process this better. It's not because it's bad guys. 
It's some of the best human beings you ever meet in your life. It's because you're seeing the worst of humanity all the time and you cannot cope. You cannot handle it, you know, and it's huge. And so Invictus, their push is make it mandatory. It's going to make everything better for everybody on both sides of the law. The people that are officers, it's helping them out with all that huge stuff. And, oh, yeah, you're going to be safer at your job. But you have a program called Blue Line to Blue Belt. Yes. Um, Can you talk about that? So the it's now going to be in its 2.0 phase. Okay. Um, if the minimum standard for law enforcement is 40 hours of training and you're doing this full time, you're just working nights, you're tired, you're working off-duty jobs because, hey, I don't make enough money, mm-hmm. you know, so I got to work the off-duty job. All these things, it's hard to get police officers to commit to getting free training. So I would have free training. And then they don't show up. Yeah. And so to me, it's like, well, what's because well, there's no skin in the game. They have no value for it. Sure. I'm just trying to eliminate an excuse because the first one is I don't have time. Yeah. Well, here's our entire schedule. You don't you're not in one slot. Well, it costs. Well, here's your scholarship. <laughs> you know, here's your regular discount anyway. So what we're doing right now, the way we're doing this is the Blue Line Blue Belt program. We're only going to have 10 slots You okay. know, starting next year. We'll have 10 slots. Everybody else that's currently in gets to continue. The 10 slots that come in, they're going to be required to have a a mandatory attendance weekly or monthly. I want these guys to feel like they have some accountability for it. They have a minimum they need to meet in order to maintain that scholarship. If they don't maintain the scholarship, they're just going to pay a discount anyway. Mm -hmm. So they can still continue training. I don't want to make it where it's like, you're out. You're out. (laughs) Done. No, I don't. You're not out. Keep coming. Keep yeah. coming. I, there's all these guys, that, and I know there's guys that are going to be watching this. They're going to say, like, man, you know, I stopped coming because I had stopped coming. That kind of thing. I didn't want you to think I was a piece of crap. Where like, dude, just come in. Yeah. yeah. I think you are. I 100% think you are. Prove me wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're a good sales guy, bro. He's like, hey, I've, I've eliminated all excuses. So now well, what? I, I mean, we, I have people all the time walk up like, oh, man, I really want to do this. Or like, I, I, you know, I really want to do a self-defense class because mm-hmm. I'm worried. You know, I, I was at HEB and there was this guy and it made me think about it. Fighting over a brisket. Cool. Well, w- when do you, you know, w- when do you come in Monday? Oh, I'm busy mm-hmm. Monday. What about Tuesday? Oh, I'm busy Tuesday. <laughs> okay, when are you not busy? Well, I, I might be free. You know when you're free or not. Because yeah. if someone says, hey, do you want to go get a drink? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I found the time. It was weird. Yep. Brad, listen, if this, uh, if this, BJJ stuff doesn't work out. I feel like you could crush it uh, selling cars. I'm not doing it. You know I'm I mean? not doing it. You're like, hey, well, uh, I'm not doing it. I can't do all that. The the tears and all the oh yeah, all the you know. Listen, I'm going to sell you the Dodge Viper, but the air conditioning, the radio, the power locks, all that stuff's extra. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> like, that's that's why we do the, the the pricing at the gym. It's yeah. so it's a membership based. It's just a monthly tuition, a monthly okay. fee, and you get to access to everything. So nice. you can come in and do jujitsu. You can stay late one night on a Monday and do wrestling. You can do MMA classes. You can do our, our law enforcement classes. Civilians can do those. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, I mean, again, people carry guns. Sure. And I also think it's very valuable for there to be that connection between the police and the community. Mm-hmm. Most police officers just hang out with police officers. Mm-hmm. You know, most people in the community don't hang out with cops. So to have those people mingling and go, oh, there's some humanity there. There's yeah. Oh, there's some humanity there too. I think that's really cool. Um, we have them seven days a week. We have seminars. Like every month I have a friend of mine come in from out of town that teaches somewhere, trains. I have guys from the UFC, Bellator. We're coming up on a new year. Mm-hmm. I'm curious if the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world is similar to the gym world where you get all of the uh, New Year's resolution people. My four week students. Okay, so, so, it's, so that counts over as well, right? You're going to get an influx. Yeah, kind of. So what we're doing, what we're going to be implementing is, is, um, and we pretty much do it right now. Word of mouth is kind of our biggest thing. Okay, you know, there's so many good schools here, so many good schools in Midland, in Midland, Odessa, Big Spring, and there's so many good schools. The biggest thing with it right now is that you can go in and train with a high level person and be able to get great information. Kind of like going to a steakhouse. You know, you're going to be able to eat great at all of them, Mm -hmm. but the atmosphere is different. The vibe. The vibe is what it's about. So for us, we'd rather have word of mouth. People don't stay because you're an amazing coach because there's so many great coaches around here. I have trained with, I've coached, or I've employed every single coach in West Texas. That's not, that's not like a brag thing. That's a like, this is so cool that we all, everybody has kind of, it's like a, it's less than a six degree separation for sure. Yeah. You know, we've all trained together. We've all talked, we've all met, we've all done stuff. And really what you see, like it's, it's just about different vibes. If people want to get involved in this stuff, you just go try them all out. Every single school here is amazing. You know, if you want world-class instruction, 
Bruno's gym's right down the street from me. Okay. I mean, the dude has made more world champions than the Russian Olympic gymnastics team, you know? Like he's <laughs> that, like that kind of level guy. He's just a great efficient Sticks coach. Sticks to landing. You guys want to go like learn some really good open guard stuff. You want to be able to learn how to invert and have some like a very, very well rounded game. Ruben over at Vagabond's amazing. You know, you want to be able to add some awesome striking, like legit pro level boxing to your stuff, you can go to Rough House. You want to be able to add like a coach that's have a coach that can teach you how to be like where you physically break people mentally and you're able to just churn out wins and get great guillotines and leg locks. I mean, Nathan's in big spring, you know, Matthew's martial arts has everything. Yeah. They've got kickboxing and they've got Hapkido. They've got all this stuff. They got, they got all the stuff. You can just find a place to train. You should just do it. Right. Yeah. There's no excuse to say, Oh, I don't like it over there. Well, cool. Go somewhere else. Yeah. It's, it's, we're just, you're just delaying benefits. Eliminate the excuses. Just do it. So Brett, moving into the new year, is there any other, um, you know, events, workshops, seminars? Yeah. Um, you know, once a month, Usually the end of the month we have tacos and training. That's just a fun community thing. People Say come out, more. Go ahead. have tacos. The guys from Odessa Charcuterie, it's Alan and Angel Brito. They make like the best uh, street tacos and loaded fries and stuff. They, yeah. they do all kinds of stuff. Um, the quesadillas are amazing. The hot sauce kills me. I, I will just be yeah. pouring. So yeah. I don't do the hot sauce, but everyone's like, this is amazing. Um, so they come out, set up the truck, and then we have people just rolling for like three hours. Just doing rounds, like gi and no gi, so uniform without the uniform. We'll have people doing, like, putting MMA gloves on and working and drilling stuff so people can come out and get some food and watch people train. That's There's cool. good music say, man, like, it's Tacos and then, and then rolling around, that sounds like a lot of – No, use, so, so <laughs> training training and tacos for the people that, that participate. Uh, okay. Tacos and training for the people that – Barfing, dude. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> tacos and watch training for the others. But we do that once a month. Those are on Sundays. And also right now we've got our Veterans Jiu-Jitsu program for Warrior yeah. Wednesdays. Warrior Wednesdays okay. is the first and third Wednesday of every month. And what those are is it's 7.30 p.m. Anybody that's uh, – current or former member of the military can come in and train for free. Oh, that's awesome. Anybody. So they don't have to train. They don't even have to train when they get there. They can just come and hang out and be entertained seeing a bunch of like a bunch of crayon eaters and a bunch of chair force guys and a bunch, you know, all these guys like doing the thing that they know how to do, which is like yeah. be warriors, be aggressive, get back in touch with that thing that you're missing, be a part of a group, be a part of those guys that are talking crap with each other. And we've been to the same place, man. We've seen the same horrible crap. Let's let's build each other up. Hey, you need something afterwards? You want to get some food? Like that's what that's about. Yeah. Nice. And we really, really want people to come into that. People are hesitant to come in because I don't know jiu-jitsu. I'm going to get beat up. No, you're not. No, you're not. I, I have veterans lead, lead the classes. Um some crazy ones that are, that are amazing. Taylor Courtney has been leading a lot of those. Um, um, Taylor's a uh, uh, United States Marine Corps. Okay. We've had Benaze Blake leading some of those. Uh, Benaz is West Point graduate. Nice. You know, was in, was in the army, um, was a tanker. Like these, these guys are amazing and they are what jujitsu is about. And we just want people to have access to that. So with our veteran jujitsu programs on Wednesdays, they come in 7 30 PM. They can train, hang out, talk to somebody. We've got resources we can direct them. If they want to train, but they don't they don't have the money to get started, combat wounded veterans, we got um We Defy Foundation that we are a official member of, so we can help get them scholarships to be able to train for a year for free. If they aren't combat wounded, they just really need to train because they're they're going through some issues, wherever Mission Twenty Two helps out. You know, if those aren't aren't viable options, we've got uh, brothers in arms through Nevada Grassi, Graffi Trophy Trophy Logistics. Okay. Um he is a big time national artist who does engravings on um, skulls and like, all kinds of um, oh. like trophies and taxidermy stuff for hunting. Cool. He's a hunting guide. He was on the cover of uh, Eastman hunting magazine and stuff. Uh, amazing artist, uh, veteran, gone through some hard times, yeah. seen some, seen some things, had, had issues and jujitsu helped him out a lot. He got really ingrained with us when he was out here living here. So he'll auction off these big old things like, elk antlers and Sweet. all these big mounts and stuff that he's carved and all these cool designs. That's He'll so auction cool. those off. And then proceeds of that, he's like, Hey, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll let me cover some vets. Let me cover some of their, their scholarships. Let me cover some cop scholarships for training you got coming up. And he hammers that out. So yeah, that's super cool. We, we've got all the resources. If someone wants to just get involved and do something, mm -hmm. man, that's really cool, man. I, Listen, if you if you're interested in jujitsu or find a way to get in shape or I like what you're doing, like you're it's not just like, okay, it's about training, but it's also about, you know, 
making friends or you know community. building community, yeah. which is super cool. So and, and that's the the benefit of having so many places here now. Like you can find the right fit. Yeah, you know? not everybody goes to every CrossFit gym. Like. Our baits every restaurant. Thanks again. We really appreciate your time. And uh, go check out uh, Midland BJJ, and we'll link all your uh, social media and your website in the description below. Cool. And uh, all right, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.